Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can create this fire sound visualizer in Blender. So let's get started. Just so you know, I'm going to use the Chaos Fire Shader add-on. You can get the add-on for the link in the description. Of course, you can also create your own shader. First hit Shift A and add a plane. Go to Geometry Nodes and click on New. Delete the Group Input and add an Icosphere. Set the subdivisions to 3 and connect the mesh to the geometry. Add a Transform node. Put it here. Add a Math node. Set it to Multiply and let's duplicate it. Plug the value into the top value here. Now plug this value into the scale. Open a new window here and set it to the graph editor. Make sure you are on frame 1 and also make sure that the plane and this math node here are selected. Hover over this value here and press I. Now go to key and go to bake sound to F curves. Go to the folder where you have the sound file. It can also be a video by the way. Now as you can see when the sound ends you've got this X here. Of course it's going to be on a different frame for you. In the output properties go to frame range and set the end to that frame. Now if we play the animation we've got something like this. And as you can see that's not enough so I'm going to set the value here to 1. And here let's increase this as well. I'm going to set this value to 2.25. I'm using geometry nodes to scale the object because here I don't know of any way to keyframe it and then multiply the scale. Add a subdivision surface node and put it here. Set the level to 3. Hit Shift A and add a cube. And let's scale this up. Go into wireframe view. Select the plane and select this math node here. Here let's click on normalize and press delete. Now find the point where the curve is highest. In my case, it's here. Let's go to this frame. I'm doing this so that I can make sure that the domain is big enough. Select the domain and scale it up. Let's save now and go back to layout mode. With the domain selected, go to the physics properties and click on fluid. Set the type to domain. I'm going to set the resolution divisions to 256. I think I'm going to scale the domain up even more just to be sure. Then I will adapt with domain, dissolve and noise. Before we bake the simulation, let's hide the plane in the render. If you don't see this icon here, you can go up here and enable it. Make sure to change the end frame. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to go to the field weights and set the gravity to zero. Set the type to all. I don't recommend that you enable is resumable because in my case I sometimes get weird results. Let's save again, select the plane. Select fluid again and now select flow. Set the flow type to fire and smoke. Set the flow behavior to inflow and I recommend that you set the sampling substeps to 15. This is going to increase the simulation quality for fast moving objects. Enable initial velocity. Let's save again. Select the domain and go down here and click on bake all. Like I said, for the shader, I'm going to use the Chaos Fire Shader add on. You can find the link to that in the description. But like I mentioned at the beginning, you can also create your own shader. Let's save again, press N and go to the Chaos Fire Shader. Click on Chaos Fire Shader. Make sure the domain is selected and in the material properties, select the Chaos Fire Shader. Go to the render properties, go to film and enable transparent. Let's also go to color management. Set the fusion form to filmic and the look to very high contrast. Now if we go to rendered view and zoom in, as you can see we've got the, these weird lines here. To get rid of them, I'm going to enable motion blur and set the shutter to 0.02. You will only be able to see the effect of this in the rendered image. I don't recommend that you go any higher than 0.02 because it will increase the rendering time a lot and it can crash Blender. As you can see, I went back to frame 13, which in my case was where the line was at its highest point. I'm doing this so that now I can select the domain, press delete on the numpad and 6 free times and now 8 once. And now if we add a camera, the flames are not going to go over the borders here. I'm going to move it up slightly, go to the output properties and select an output folder. I'm going to set the file format to JPEG and the quality to 100%. In the render properties, I'm going to set the max samples to 256. Go to compositing, enable use nodes, Enable denoising data and add a denoise node set to accurate. By the way, if you go back to render properties, you can go to performance and enable persistent data. Just be careful with this because it can also use a lot of memory. And you can also go to render and lock interface. Now let's save again and press Ctrl F12. Once it's done rendering, close this window and go to video editing. Make sure you're on frame 1, hover over the file location and press Ctrl C. Hit Shift A. 
image sequence, press A and enter. In my case, I'm going to add a video file and use the sound of the video. Of course, if you only want to use a sound file, then choose sound. If you're using a video file, then delete this blue strip. Go to the output properties, set the file format to FFmpeg video, the encoding container to MPEG4, and the output quality to high quality. Now go to audio and select MP3. Save again and press Ctrl F12. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then you're probably also going to like to run this on screen now. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.